English writing skills. Punctuation marks. Lesson 4. In this lesson, we'll review how we use an apostrophe to show possession, and we'll look at two more uses of the comma, to separate items in a series, and to separate city from state or city from country. Perhaps it's been a while since you've focused on writing skills in English. Let's review some of the punctuation that's been covered so far in this series. We've been talking about magical powers and special abilities. Take a look at this statement. Do you recall the point about magical powers being dangerous? Maybe you recall, maybe you don't. But I hope you do remember that every sentence begins with a capital letter. And every sentence must have final sentence punctuation. Here we're asking a question, so we need a question mark. Let's say this question is being asked by a person by Olivia. How do we show that these are her words? We use quotation marks and this question mark falls inside the quotation marks. Here's the true end of our statement now. We need a period. Do you recall the point about magical powers being dangerous? asked Olivia. Now we'll move further. One of the topics in this lesson will be possessive nouns. Let's not say the point. Let's talk about someone's point. Whose point? How do we show possession? Apostrophe S. Do you recall Paul's point about magical powers being dangerous? asked Olivia. When we have a person's name, we use apostrophe S to show possession. Whose point? Paul's point. Let's get a little tricky and change this from Paul to Jonas, a man's name. How do we show possession now? The same way apostrophe S. Okay, it's still one person. Some people feel that it's acceptable not to use an S when a name ends with S. Jonas, James, Charles. However, it is also acceptable to use that S with an apostrophe. I think it's simpler to remember apostrophe S for one person. Paul's point Jonas's point. I'm going to get a little tricky. Give me a moment to make some changes and then I'm going to challenge you. I remember Olivia and Paul's questions about the dangers of magic. Whose questions? Olivia and Paul's. Did they ask the same questions? Did they share the same questions? Yes. I have two names, but a single apostrophe and then S. If I add another apostrophe S, the meaning changes a bit. Do you understand how? I remember Olivia's and Paul's questions about the dangers of magic. This now says that Olivia had questions and Paul had questions. They were different. She had hers, he had his. Let's read our next statement. Magical powers could bring good, bad, or unexpected changes into people's lives. Is this written correctly? Well, if I'm asking, you know it's not. 
The first thing I want you to change is the possessive noun. Do you see where it should be? Right here. We're missing an apostrophe, apostrophe s. People is an irregular plural noun. We make it possessive with an apostrophe s, even though there are many people. Now, let's change this word to another plural noun that follows the rules for making plural nouns. Let's use students. How do we make this possessive? With simply an apostrophe. You don't need the S because it's a plural noun. Okay? Now, in this statement, we also have something called a series. A series of items is a list of items, more than two. Good, bad, unexpected. I have three adjectives. How do I separate items in a series? I use a comma. I use a comma to separate the items, all the items. Now, some people choose not to use a comma before the conjunction, or, or and. I feel it's best to use it. Good, bad, or unexpected. Okay, so we use commas between all the items, and I recommend using a comma even before the conjunction. Magical powers could bring good, bad, or unexpected changes into students' lives. I agree that having magical powers could be dangerous, but I still think it would be pretty cool to do magic. For example, could you imagine being able to transport yourself from one place to another? For example, I'd say Paris, and then I'd magically appear in Paris, France. Look how I wrote the statement. Some things are correct. I have a comma to set off my introductory phrase. I have an apostrophe in my contractions. I have final sentence punctuation. And I have quotation marks to show my direct speech, a comma to set that direct speech off. My exclamation point falls inside my quotation marks. But a comma is missing. Do you know where? Right there. We use commas to separate a city and a country, or a city and a state. When we have those two geographical places, we use a comma to separate them. Now, if my sentence continued on, watch what would happen. I'd magically appear in Paris France the next instant. France is treated as secondary information. It's not as important. So I set it off with commas. This is a rule that not everyone knows, not everyone remembers. I sometimes forget myself because often, you know, Paris, France, that kind of city, country structure would appear at the end of a sentence. So we don't run into this situation. But if it appears in the middle of a sentence, we should set off the country with commas. Then we continue to the end. This is the end of part one. Please go on to the next part of this lesson. When you finish the lesson, remember there's more practice on my website at www.englishwithjennifer.com.